In part 2.1, you will build the circuit of figure 1 titled uh, 3 resistor circuit. First determine the color code of your resistors and then write them next to the circuit. For example, the 15 kilo ohm resistor should be brown, green, orange. Then gather the resistors that you need. When you build your circuit on the breadboard, you should try to make the breadboard circuit look like the schematic as much as possible and this will help you make the testing and debugging easier. You also want to make sure that you spread out your components so you can easily get your measurement leads in the circuit without accidentally making connections. Once the circuit is built, I set up the power supply. Turn on the power supply, set the voltage limit to 6 volts. For safety, I set the limit of the current to, to 1 amp. I will leave the output off for now. Next, I set up the DMM to work in the DC current mode. Double check that you've set the ground terminal in the port labeled ground, the black port. Remember on the BNC to banana connector, the ground terminal is the one with the small tab labeled GND. The voltmeter can be placed in parallel with any of the elements, so you can measure voltage without disrupting the circuit. For this reason, I always measure the voltage first. For example, I'll set the power supply to output on, and then I measure the voltage across the power supply, and I confirm that I'm measuring 6 volts. Next, I continue to measure the voltage V1 and V2 in the schematic, and I compare my answers to those of my predictive measurements. You should get your measured value of voltage within 5% of your predicted value. To measure current, you need to place the current meter in series, so you need to break your circuit. Think about where you want to break the circuit by first looking at the schematic. For instance, we can measure the current I2 going downward through the 20 kilo ohm resistor by placing the current meter in the line with the 20 ohm resistor and then what we'll do is break the circuit here and all the current will go through the ammeter and none of it will go through the other elements of the circuit. Next you are directed to measure the resistance of each resistor with the DMM and compare the ohmmeter's measurement of resistance with the resistance calculated from the voltage and currents that you just measured. Here I demonstrate common pitfall in measuring resistance. Notice that if we place the leads of the ohmmeter across the 3.6 kilo ohm resistor, the DMM reads close to 3.6 kilo ohms. Okay, that's good. Next, when we place the DMM across the 20 kilo ohm resistor, we are now reading about 8.5 kilo ohms, not even close. The problem here is that we're trying to measure the resistance of one resistor, but it is connected in the circuit to other resistors. Since the ohmmeter actually uses a small test voltage source, current from that source is traveling through the 20 kilo ohm resistor and the 15 kilo ohm resistor, and we are actually measuring the equivalent resistance of the 20 and 15 kilo ohm resistors in parallel. The lesson learned here is that you should always measure resistance with the ohmmeter when the resistor is out of the circuit. Now I read close to 20 kilo ohms, which is the expected amount. One way to make sure that you are measuring values correctly is to verify your measurements with a KCL or KVL. For example, pick any closed loop and measure the voltage across each element. Verify that the algebraic sum is zero. Or you can sum the currents leaving any node. You should organize your measurements and analysis in a data table that is easy to read In part 2.2, you will build a slightly more complicated circuit. Again, a best practice is to spread out your components and make the circuit on the breadboard look like the schematic on paper. One additional tip that I commonly use for more complicated circuits is that I label on the schematic the numbered row on the breadboard so that I can easily compare the physical layout with the schematic. Place the resistors first using placeholders for the sources and then populate the sources. Next, set up the limits of the power supply, and only when you think that you have everything connected, turn the output for the power supply on. 
There are two sources in this circuit. Remember, we can get three different sources from the triple DC power supply. We will use the plus six power supply to create the ideal voltage supply of five volts. Press plus six volts. Set the voltage limit to five. Then set the current limit to some value that is larger than the current that you expect to draw. One amp should be plenty here. Next, we'll set up the ideal current source using the plus 25 volt source. We need to set the voltage limit to higher than we need, so we'll set this to the max, plus 25 volts. Then the power supply will try to deliver 25 volts to the circuit, but we will prematurely limit the current to 40 milliamps. That is, set the current limit to 0 0.04 amps. Once the power supply reaches its current limit, it cannot increase the voltage without increasing the current, so now it will act as an ideal current supply of 40 milliamps. Double check that the current in the branch is indeed 40 milliamps. The ammeter here is reading 40.4 milliamps. Now let's try to reduce the voltage limit and see what happens. If the voltage limit is lower than the required voltage in this circuit that will be around 12 volts, then the power, the power supply would be limited by the voltage, not the current. So it would not act like a 40 milliamp current source in that case. So long as you have the voltage limit greater than what you need, you should be able to draw 40 milliamps of current from the power supply. Here I'm okay when I limit the current, the voltage to about 14 volts, but as soon as I drop below 12 volts, my current is dropping below the 40 milliamps, and now I don't have the meter set up correctly. Next, I measure the voltage for each element, including the sources. Remember that since the voltmeter is set in parallel, I don't need to disrupt the circuit at all, and I make sure that I measure the voltage at the correct polarity as I labeled on my circuit with the positive end of the voltage connected to the red lead and the negative end of the voltage connected to the black wire or the black lead. As, and you should do this as you've defined it in your circuit. To measure the currents, you need to break the circuit and place the ammeter in series setting the current to enter the red or the plus terminal of the ammeter. Make sure that every measurement that you make can be repeated by correctly marking the current directions, the voltage polarity, and labeling all the elements in your schematic. For each element now, you will compute the power using the passive sign convention. Verify that your measurements are correct by comparing the measured power to the predicted power that you calculated in the prelab with the percent error calculations. Then verify that the total absorbed power is equal to the total delivered power. Remember, when you make comparisons, you should always be quantitative. Simply stating that the absorbed power is close, or even very close, to the delivered power is not precise. Quantitate the difference with a number or an appropriate comparison.